Right, before I get to my next guest, Owen Brown, I want to remind you about a few of our sponsors. Be sure to check out our friends at the Ben Hogan Golf Equipment Company. And folks, if you haven't hit Ben Hogan Iron since maybe the 80s or the 90s, do yourself a favor and get a demo iron. You can go on their site. They'll send you a demo. So get a demo iron from either their Fort Worth PTX, new PTX Pro irons, which I love. Took them out on the range this past weekend. Really, really nice. Or another Edge irons as well. Take them out on the range with you and compare it to whatever it is you've got. All Ben Hogan irons and wedges are handcrafted one at a time in their Fort Worth, Texas factory. So no mass production, no shortcuts. Now you can order custom-made irons, wedges, and hybrids by going online to BenHoganGolf.com. And like I said, they're going to build those clubs to your specifications. The best of all, charge you a fraction of the typical retail price. Check out their complete line of forged irons, wedges, utility irons, hybrids, bags, and accessories, and their new GS53 driver and the Fairwoods as, Fairway Woods as well, which all look absolutely fantastic. I'm reading really great reviews about them online. Check it all out online by going to BenHoganGolf.com. I also want to give a shout out to a couple of our new sponsors, starting with our friends at the Sandestin Resort. Surrounded by white sand beaches and the beauty of the Gulf of Mexico, Sandestin Golf and Beach Resort offers three championship golf courses open to the public and one semi-private course. With recognition from leading golf magazines and reviewers around the world, each course provides an exciting challenge in different scenic settings. Golfers can choose to play one or all courses, including Raven Golf Club, the Robert Trent Jones layout that played host to the PGA Tour champions back in 2006 and 2007. The Lynx Golf Club, designed by Tom Jackson, offers a winding layout against a backdrop of Baytown Marina in the Chakawachi Bay. Baytown Golf Club, also designed by Tom Jackson, offers a fifth set of U.S. Kids Junior Tees and Burnt Pine Golf Club, which is a semi-private Reese Jones design available only to registered Sandestin guests. Visit them online at sandestin.com forward slash tea time or give them a call at 844-887-SAND for more information and to book your tea times. I also want to welcome Golf Pride to the next on the tea family. In golf, light grip pressure releases power. Golf Pride engineered a secret the pros know. A larger lower hand encourages lighter pressure. Plus four technology is designed with four additional layers, which reduces tension in the lower hand to generate more power. Play plus four and experience the secret pros know. Now available on Tour Velvet, the winningest grip on Tour. Grip confidence, grip golf pride. I also want to give a shout out to our friends over at Positive Vibes Golf. Check them out online at PositiveVibesGolf.com. Give them a follow on Twitter at PVibesGolf. Their head covers and putter covers are a unique way to keep your mind focused on positive thoughts. And then, uh, you know, it's a great training aid as well to stay positive and put positive, happy images in your mind. I've got my set just arrived this week. They're fantastic. Go online and see for yourself. PositiveVibesGolf.com. And folks, this segment of the show is sponsored by our friends at the PGA Tour Superstore. This segment of the show is brought to you by the PGA Tour Superstore. See why golfers everywhere are proud to call PGA Tour Superstore their golf pro shop. Visit them online at PGASuperstore.com. Now, back to you, Chris. All right, now back in making his seventh appearance with me here on the French Lake Resort guest line is Owen Brown. Let me remind you a little bit about Owen's background. He's from Washington, D.C., played his college golf out at Occidental College in L.A., Joined the golf team as a sophomore and gradually made his way up to being their number one player. He was named a first-team all-conference, all-SCIAC golfer in 1980 and 82, was inducted into their Golf Hall of Fame in 1997, and their Golf Annual MVP Award is now, it, is now named in his honor. He turned pro in 84, won four times on what was then the Nike Tour, twice in 1991, once in 93, and again in 96. He's won three times on the regular tour, and just a few days ago was the 21st anniversary of his win at the 1998, what was then the Greater Hartford Open. We know it now as the Travelers Championship. He won that tournament by chipping in, oh, by the way, from 40 feet to defeat Stuart Sink and Larry Mize in a playoff. He also won the 1999 Colonial and the 2005 Deutsche Bank Championship. In 2005, he won the PGA Tour Comeback Player of the Year Award over the course of his playing career. He's had five wins, 48 top uh, top 10 finishes, and 110 top 25, including in those five wins are two so far out on the Champions Tour. He won the 2011 U.S. Senior Open and the 2015 Greater, Green, uh, Greater Gwinnett Open here 
in uh, in Atlanta. Nearly won earlier this year at the Chubb Classic. He's having a good season out there on the Champions Tour with a couple of top tens. Had a strong finish this past weekend, which uh, I'm hoping gives him a lot of momentum going into this week's U.S. Senior Open Championship. And I'm glad to have him back with me again tonight here on Next on the T. Hey, Owen, how are you, my friend? Hi, Chris. I'm hoping too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you are. So, Owen, you're there, right? This week is the U.S. Senior Open Championship. So talk about uh, what's going on out there in South Bend. Well, uh, you know, i got to tell you, uh, the USGA, to have us here at the Warren course uh, on Notre Dame, it's literally on the campus of Notre Dame, and it's such a storied uh, university and such a great place. Uh, the golf course is exceptional, and I say that with absolutely no equivocation. It's a beautiful layout. It's in wonderful condition, and uh, the hospitality here has been extraordinary. Uh, they have to register, believe it or not. They have to register, believe it or not. You may have caught it on my Twitter in the football stadium, and then we got to run out of the field, football around a little bit. It's a pretty cool place. No doubt. So I'm assuming you, you saw the, I saw some of the videos you put out there on your, on your Twitter page, right? And uh, the big sign, right? Play like a champion, right there in the locker room. You got to go out there. You got to touch that, right? You got to you got to touch that. You got to go by uh, touchdown, Jesus. What's that all like when uh, you're you're sort of in all of that history? Well, I mean, you know, if if you're not a Notre Dame guy and you see that kind of stuff, you're going, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Alabama does it and Michigan does it and USC does it and all the great schools have their little shtick and you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then when you get in the building and you get to do it yourself, you go, okay, I get it. You know, like, it's uh, it's an extraordinary thing. The culture, culture is legit. It's for real. There's history here and um, – you know, to be to be able to experience that um, as somebody who's on the outside looking in um, is kind of a it's unique and it's, and it's endearing. Frankly, it makes you uh, makes you understand makes you understand their culture, makes you understand their enthusiasm. And Owen, you mentioned what a beautiful course it is out there, designed by uh, Bill Core and Ben Crenshaw. It's uh, not all that old. So I'm curious to get your thoughts of, you know, actually the, the course layout and uh, if you've had a chance to get out there and have some practice rounds, what it feels like out there. So I played the last couple of uh We had pretty nice conditions. The course is soft, raining like crazy here. The course has a look like it's been here for 100 years. Um, and you look at it, and I don't know if this is a compliment to Ben and uh, Bill Core and Ben Crenshaw or – or not, and I'm hoping that they take it as a compliment, but you look at it and you go, I, I, I think this looks like a Donald Ross course. The greens have that kind of presentation. There's some kind of squarish fronts. It's, uh, the, the green slope, they pitch from back to front. The bunkers are, are guarding the greens on either side. Um, in a lot of cases, they've got part threes that are short, they have part threes that are long. It's an old-style golf course. Um the green complexes are framed beautifully by the bunkering. The fairways are ample. Uh, it's a second shot golf course. The fairways are ample. They give you some room, but the greens tend to be a little bit on the small side and there's some, there's some undulations and some movement and there's some pretty cute hole locations. The shorter the hole, the more exacting those are. The longer hole, the more forgiving. But I just think it's a beautiful, beautiful design. It's a wonderful layout and, uh, and there are opportunities for lots of good things to happen, and there are opportunities for lots of funky things to happen, too. So there's going to be, you know, the scores are going to look a little bit like heart monitors this week. Um, I think it's a great test, and the USGA is great to have brought us here, and it's a wonderful setup. And, Owen, you had a really good weekend this past week, and it's got to, got to be a confidence builder and, and give you a little bit of momentum coming into into this tournament. How do you feel about the state of your game? Well, you know, it's really funny because I went to sign my scorecard on Sunday and Fig, the guy who takes our scores, he asked for my ID when I shot I shot 67. I played a really nice round of golf. So I to make sure it was me who showed up in the scoring <laughs> tent with that. <laughs> um, you know, my, my, game, my game has been okay all year. Look, the bottom line is whether or not I feel good with my putter. And I, and I haven't felt good with my putter since Chubb. 
Uh, but, you know, I did some work with my caddy, Sandy Armour, today out on the, on the practice train afterwards. And, look, golf is a mystery to me. I don't get it. Uh, all, uh, you know, all of us who have played for as long as we've all played out here on the Champions Tour, most of us don't get it. Very hard longer. I think he, I think he's, uh, he's taking a sabbatical from men in black because he's some kind of alien the way he plays. And, uh, <laughs> it's just the, the nature of the game. You know, it's a freak show out here. And the guys, <laughs> guys who say they understand it, the guys who say they understand that they don't. They're telling his story. You know what I mean? But, uh, I, uh, it, it, it's such a joy to play this game. It's such a wonderful game. It, for me personally, it tests my patience. It tests my sense of humor. Um, the, the thrills are so far between, but you know, it keeps coming out every day back for war. And, and it's just, just, I feel so, so game for as long as I've had. And, uh, you know, at, at the age of 60 now, the only regret is I don't have that much time left because I'd like to keep trying, you know? Absolutely. Hey, just a couple more before I let you go. I know you got a busy schedule ahead of you. One of the things that I've noticed when I kind of was looking back over your career, Olin, is you won, you know, a, a few years back in, in Hartford. You won the Deutsche Bank Championship up at the TPC of Boston. We know you're from just outside of DC, but there's some, is there something about New England? Something about that New England area that makes you feel at home, comfortable. What is it about that area that uh, it seems like when you look back over the course of your career, you play well there? Shut up question, bro. Uh, but, you know, my, mom, my mom's family's from Providence and, and Vermont, places like that. So I got New England roots, and I, I feel an affinity for New England. I'm a big Red Sox guy. I like the Patriots. Um, of course, the Bruins had a great run this year, and uh, the Celtics are – you know, an historical franchise. So, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of great sports in the New England area. And, you know, I just feel, listen, there needs to be more golf up there. We need the Champions Tour needs to be up there more. We've had great events up there. The, the fans in Norton at Deutsche Bank uh, at the TPC out there were just off the charts. It's so great to go up there. They have such an appreciation for sports. Uh, let, let's find a way to spend a little more time up in the Northeast. So to take that setup question a step further, right? You, you got the U.S. Senior Open up there next year, right? At the at the Newport Country Club in Rhode Island. That's got to be special for you. I'm gonna, well, you know, I see Tiger an awful lot on the range at home. I'm gonna be grilling him about. It. Of course, he's gonna laugh at me the whole time. He says you and I can't talk about golf because our skill sets are different. <laughs> I get that, you know, but that's not really the issue. I'm looking for a little inside info. You know, he laughs at me. So when I won Deutsche Bank in 05, he led after the first round, and I led the rest of the way to the tournament. And uh, he'll, he'll walk by me on the range. He'll kind of he'll kind of look at me and go, how did you win that tournament, you know? It's a little <laughs> bit of a needle. I dig it. He likes, he likes that back and forth. It's, it's fun. Uh, I'll find out. I'll get, some, I'll get some scoop. I'll get some inside info on, New, on Newport Country Club. Owen, one more before I let you go. How's your son doing? How's Owen Brown Jr.? He's doing great, Chris. Thanks for trying to work his way up the board he's but you know his game his game is coming around he's doing some his way up the ladder Owen, remind our listeners because you're you're probably the best internet dish jockey there is let them know how they can uh, stay up to date with all you're doing on social media yeah um i like posting a song song of the day i'll post you know some of the two well i like listening to you know the stuff that we all grew up with you know you and i are I don't know exactly how old you are, but we're in the similar we're in a similar category. And uh Indeed. I like posting every morning, like welcoming everybody nice tune, you know. You I spend my time on the radio now flipping channels and I haven't I haven't done the whole thing. I d I don't want to check out completely and have my own playlist. So, you know, hey look, post a song, welcome everybody to the new day and see where it goes. Oh, and you're fantastic, my friend. Thank you so much for taking time out of your night to come back and be a part of the show. You're one of my all-time favorites, my friend. Best of luck Chris. this week. I'm rooting hard for you. Always good talking to you. If I could touch on one thing before we go. Uh, sure. So I, I was listening in uh, with, Kel with Kelly earlier, and it's great to hear from her. Uh, you know, I, I haven't heard or seen from Kelly for like 30 years when, when we were at Admiral's Cove. She was a teaching professional there. But she said a couple of things that really resonated with me. And one of the things she said is that her teaching has evolved. And, you know, so many times you'll, you'll talk to people who say, 
my pro said this and this and this, and then six months later, my pro said something different. Well, the thing that people need to understand when they, when they talk to their golf professional and try to learn something new is that delivery systems for information change. And philosophies change. And if you're not growing as an instructor or as a player, you're going down the drain. So, you know, it me that struck a chord, and it was a very poignant thing for her to say. And the other thing is, she was talking about hitting shots out of the rough and how good the tour players are out of the rough. Play, uh, amateurs get stuck too much on hitting a certain kind of shot, and especially out of the rough, because the 60-degree wedge has become such a to an important club. Most people need the extra bounce of the 56-degree. When you get into heavy stuff, use more bounce. It'll help you out. Great comments and great tip. Thank you for taking time to share that, Owen. You're the best, my friend. Take care. Best of luck this week. Talk to you again soon, man. It's always great talking to you, and uh, best of luck to you and what you're doing. You do always do a great job, and keep it up on Twitter. Keep it up on your show. Talk to you again soon. All right. Take care, Owen. All the best to you and your family, my friend. Thank you. That is the great Owen Brown, and uh, make sure you follow him on Twitter, and Brown is B-R-O-W-N-E, so don't forget the E, at Owen Brown. When you, uh, he, uh, I tell you, I'm up early in the morning, and one of the first things I do is go to Owen's page because he, he posts a great song. I tell him all the time, he's the best internet disc jockey there is, so he always gets the day started off on a great note, and then, uh, you know, keeping track of all the great things he's doing out there on the uh, on the Champion Store. Folks, you know, when you when you really want to root for somebody in whatever sport it is, whether it's a team sport or in this case in golf and an individual sport, the kind of thing that, that takes somebody over the top for me is that they're a great person, got they have great character, and they're just a great individual, someone you want to be around. And uh, that describes Owen Brown. Great guy, wonderful individual, has a great attitude, a great zest for life, and is just, you know, as down to earth and as real as they come. And that's why he's uh, one of my all-time favorites here on the show. Why I always look forward to having, looking forward to having him as part of the show. And as you can imagine, can't, uh, can't have him back soon enough. So root for him this weekend. He's going to be a guy that uh, I, I have a good feeling he's going to be right at the top of the leaderboard come uh, Sunday night. All right, folks, it is time for me to put a bow on this edition of Next on the Tee. My sincere thanks go out again to Kelly Stenzel and Owen Brown for joining me tonight. Please check out our website, nextonthetea.net. On there, you'll be able to keep up to date with uh, what our guest schedule is. And plus, we link back over to uh, our page over on Podbean. So there you can stream or download any of our recent or archive episodes for free. Please also check us out on a new site, launchpaddm.com. That's where uh, Podcast One sort of takes a look at shows that they are going to bring along. And uh, we would really appreciate your support. And Click on the subscribe button on our page there. We would really appreciate that very much. You can also stream us on great sites and apps like I mentioned Podbean, but also on Spotify, iHeartRadio, AudioBoom, and Player.fm as well. Please give me, uh, give me your thoughts on the show. Go on to our Facebook page, Next on the Tee with Chris Mascaro. Share your feedback right there. Plus, if you got a question, like I always say, if you got a question for one of our future guests that you saw on our guest schedule on, uh, on our website or someone who's already been on the show, Please let me know. I'll be glad to get that uh, question either answered for you or we'll ask it on the air. Again, uh, it's, uh, it's on our Facebook page. And our website, again, is nextonthetea.net. Folks, thanks again for choosing to listen to this show tonight. We really appreciate the fact that you are making us a part of your golfing content. Until next week, hit them straight, my friends. You've been listening to Next on the Tea with Chris Mascaro. instructors and media members go to tell their stories join us the same time every Tuesday